DNA Video Productions is a full-service video producer with a fleet of drones, 4K, and HD cameras, as well as a crew of video operators. We handle commercial and residential real estate videos, as well as events for promotional purposes. We create book trailers, both live action and running stills, music videos, and website videos. We also film series shorts for online distribution and are currently involved in filming a political parody. We specialize in low-cost movie making. Call DNA Video Productions at 941-748-6865 or visit our website at www.dnavideoproductions.com. That's www.dnavideoproductions.com. Thank you. Our sponsor this month is Published, an affiliate of Village Voices. Published offers all author services from writing tips, critiques, manuscript evaluations, and editing, as well as tips to help you become published. If you prefer to self-publish, purchase the step-by-step -step book on publishing through Amazon, or purchase services a la carte, from formatting to creating custom covers or even tips to gather endorsements. The staff is headed by two professional writers. After your books are published, either trade paper, electronically, or both, purchase marketing tips, web services, book trailers, or turn your book into an audiobook. Publish provides all your writing, publishing, and marketing needs. So give them a call at 941-748-6865. Contact them online at dgould 497 at AOL.com or go to the website at www.publishedavillagevoices.webs.com. Good afternoon. Welcome to Culture Coast. Our show runs a little bit short today, so I thought this would be a good time to talk to my listeners about what Culture Coast actually is about. We are discussing with artists of every persuasion, whether it is two-dimensional paintings, drawings, photographs, or sculptures, wood art, and all the many crafts that are made by artists, as well as acting and culinary arts and healing arts and literary arts. The list just goes on and on and on. All the diverse creatives that are in the area of Sarasota and Manatee County in Florida. This show could go further than my lifetime because we have so many incredibly gifted people in the area. So I wanted to let you know that that's who we talk to. And what we talk about is how they got to explore their inner artist and where they came from and where they hope to be heading because there are so many different paths. You don't always have to go to a college and learn your craft. Sometimes there's, with the internet now, you can do a lot of it online. There are groups out there, mentors, there's, you might learn it from somebody in your family, but there's millions of paths 
as many as there are artists, there's that many paths, and we want you to understand that if you have a passion and you keep putting it off, stop and, and let yourself start doing your passion. Start doing it every day or every couple days. Just dabble. Let it be a hobby at first and let it build, but open yourself up to the possibilities that you don't have to wait till you retire because it might be too late. We want you to be able to find that inner artist within you. So I hope you enjoy today's show. It is We are going to be talking to Sophia Masterson. She is an 18-year-old high school student who is starring in the play the Phantom over at Manatee Players, and she is a triple threat. She excels at acting, singing, and dancing, and she's earned the lead. She will be going to college up north. She's she's majoring in in singing, but she will also be taking courses on acting and dancing. So she is planning on expanding her career and staying in the arts. Many people that are, find themselves in high school are really good at something, put it aside because there's no way they can become stars right from the start and they can't make a living unless they are at the top of the field. So they put it aside and they play in community theaters or they <laughs> try to incorporate other types of art into their life. Even gardening and cooking are arts if you let yourself be creative and grow with them. So I want you all to find your own inner artist and let yourself grow no matter where you are. And it doesn't have to be on the culture coast, but we hope you all find the path to your passion. So now we will join the show with Sophia Masterton and listen to how she has started on the path to her passion. Good afternoon. Welcome to Culture Coast. The intro you just heard was by Al Musitano. And today we are with... Sophia Masterson. Sophia Masterson, who is an actress and is currently starring in The Phantom of the Opera at the Manatee Players. It's just Phantom. Just Phantom? It's not Phantom of the Opera. Oh, okay. <laughs> so have they changed the play itself because it's, of that? It's a, it's the same, similar story. It's just different, written by different people, and it's not so Angela you can't use the, So you can't take the yes. same title. It's just Phantom. Okay, <laughs> that's all right. Everybody will get the idea at least. So how how long have you been acting? Because Culture Coast is all about how you mm-hmm. came to be where you are mm-hmm. now. Since I was, for as long as I can remember, you know, my parents had always made sure I was in dance lessons. I picked up, made sure I picked up an instrument when I was young. And I also did a lot within, like, the community. With I joined the youth opera, which I did that for six years now so this you you came by this at, at a very young age were either of your parents in show business they were not no um, no musicians no artists no no just but yeah, they but they, they did they saw the importance supported of you putting their kids i'm um the fourth of five so in all of us my parents made sure they put all of us into music what? lessons dance lessons and it importance. took with you what about with your your siblings we all still play our instruments um my sister's in new york dancing um and my brother he is a trombonist and wow so, so you've got a bunch of artists yes. artists out of this whole thing now are you a native of florida i'm not okay I'm, where'd y'all come from um born and raised in pittsburgh pennsylvania and what, how did you end up here uh, my dad's work took us down here um and i think my parents just always Love this area and the art influence here. So a lot of lot of art here. Mm-hmm. Um, amazingly, everybody thinks, oh, small town Bradenton, but for the size we have, probably more art than anywhere else in the country. It's, yes. it's incredible <laughs> that it's more of an artistic community than anything. So, welcome again. <laughs> now you're you're an actress. Did, have you gone to college? Are you? Did you go to college for acting, or did you go to go to school? Just continue school. How did you get to be where you are? I'm actually a senior in high school right now. Wow! And yes. Seriously? Yes, I'm 18. Um, <laughs> I never. Is opera your first love? Yes. So I it's started not opera so much and... acting. It's it's more about the voice. Yes, well, the wonderful thing about Carnegie Mellon is um, they're all about triple threats, whatever, if you're doing musical theater or you're doing classical. 
So they, you still take a lot of acting and a lot of dance courses. I, in the fall, I will be pursuing a career in the arts and going to Carnegie Mellon University for vocal performance. And where is Carnegie Mellon? It's in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So you're going far away from the family. Yes. And you're, you're going to be going to Carnegie Mellon. And what are you majoring in? Vocal performance. All right. So which is more important to you, the acting or the singing, or is it just a combination of both? I, I think it's all very important because you could have you could be the most incredible singer, but if you don't portray anything, you know, people won't feel it. Um, the wonderful thing about Carnegie Mellon is they train you. You take singing classes as well as a lot of acting and dance so you're able to do all of it you know so you can be the best performer at triple threat so if it's a musical you can perform in a musical mm -hmm. and if it's just a regular play you can still you can still yes. ace it and and get the part because yes. you've learned it all mm -hmm. now um you your your the rest of your family are they also pursuing because you said you're Yes. Or one out of five. Mm -hmm. All right, so yes. <laughs> one out of five, and you've got some others that are in the arts. Have they? Are they ahead of you or behind you? Um, they're. I'm the fourth. So um, my sister went to Florida State for dance, and she's right out of college. She found work, and she's dancing in New York. Um, as what kind of what kind of work do you find as a dancer? She teaches at um, big dance companies up there, including Alvin Ailey. And Ballet Academy East. I've actually heard of Ballet. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a it's a huge, really big company, and she works with the younger divisions. And um, she's the only one of my siblings that actually majored in it. But everybody else, my other sisters, my other sisters still in school, but take dance very seriously. My brother still plays his instruments, and so it, he's ahead of you. Is mm -hmm. he working professionally? At he's it? no. He just he does that on the side. Okay, so, so is he in a band? He, yeah, he was for a time. I get okay. that. Mm -hmm. And so that your whole family is very artistic. They're all creative. Yes. <laughs> and that's very good to have the support of the whole family. Mm -hmm. So you're all pursuing those kind of things. Your parents didn't say, well, you know, there's there may not be a career in this for you. <laughs> yeah, we've, you know, as a performer, you have to think about the If you're going and want to pursue that, you have to think about it's not an easy business, you know, but... Um, I just, I, you have to think, I can't imagine myself doing anything else. So if, I think when you get to that point, that's when you have to just go for it. <laughs> I'm so glad to hear that, that you haven't been stifled, especially with arts. You said you're still in high school. Which school are you going to? Lakewood Ranch. Lakewood Ranch, mm -hmm. all right. They may be one of the better ones for not stifling the arts, but I know mm -hmm. a lot of schools have cut back on their arts. There's no more theater and there's no yes. more film classes even mm -hmm. and there's no more art classes and I mean they've just cut 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 trying to go on the focus of mm -hmm. education is all about math science English and literature you mm -hmm. know it, and history it's it's they've cut yes. to the cores and and they have left out all of the peripherals mm -hmm. what they used to call the electives but the electives yeah. are part of mm -hmm. I think what makes life worth yeah. living it's kind of helped me grow kind of as a student in addition to a person all my different electives i'm lucky to what school i go to because our, our arts teachers have fight so hard to keep the arts so thriving in our school which so i'm so incredibly lucky but <laughs> yeah and and lakewood ranch i think the um the the student body is from a more influential financially background there there's a lot of people with not big huge bucks but well off they're mm -hmm. comfortable and they do want their kids to enjoy all of the things that they enjoy so mm -hmm. I think that makes a big difference whereas in the in in inner city schools it's more you have to learn how to do your math so you can be a cashier somewhere or you can go do construction or you know that they, mm -hmm. they, they are not being educated toward the towards the arts. I think you're lucky in going to Lakewood Ranch. It mm -hmm. really is a great school for that. Also a great community as far as what they have to offer in the community. Yes. And here you are. How did you get the, the how long have you been with playing with Manatee players? Not too long. I, last year, I because I had always done, I've been in the youth opera and I did professional operas, youth operas for six years and then I did all my school musicals and things like that and then I, I was like 
kind of wanted to do something outside of all that. So I just came to Manatee Players and just did one of their auditions, and I got cast last year. I did Brigadoon, which was my first show with them. And then I did. Were, what were you yeah. cast at in Brigadoon? Was it a Jean. starring role? So Jean. So it was. It was right a, from the get go. You got right to the, <laughs> right to the top, huh? Yes, it was a lot of fun. And then I did. I love you. You're perfect. Now change was the next show I did here, which was super incredible because it was in this small theater with a four person cast. So wow. I ne- yeah I'd I never didn't realize done, this cast was that small on that. Yeah, I'd never done that kind of intimate theater where you're like that far from the audience. The, the audience in front of you. So, yeah. Which we're sitting in right now, the small theater. Yes, <laughs> yes. I was, like, right there and singing. When, yeah. So it was a different, a really cool experience to do that. Very nice. And now you are the star in The Phantom. Phantom, yes. And so tell us a little bit about how that, did you, you audition for it? How many people were you auditioning against? I was actually up at Carnegie Mellon for my audition, when the, it was audition weekend here. So Steve Dawson, our director, who's so wonderful, he allowed me to send in a video, oh, wow. a so, video audition. So you didn't so, even have to be here, but they already so, knew your work. And, yes. And they yeah. kind of knew they wanted you, but they were seeing if there was somebody else better maybe. I don't know. Maybe. But um, I was able to send in a video of me singing and doing a monologue and be compared against everybody else. So so when I got that phone call that I got it, it was... It was really exciting. And you got Carnegie Mellon, too. Yes. So you won two editions It's been, a, it's been a good good weekend. Yeah. yeah. It was a great weekend. Yeah. So how long will the Phantom be playing here at Manatee? It runs, we open on this Thursday till May 8th. So, so three weeks. Yes. Okay. So you're, you've got a three-week run starting mm-hmm. this week. And is that typical? And do you get paid? No, it's it's it, it is volunteer. volunteer. Yes. So this is all an all volunteer yes. cast, and that's how they manage to put on these shows mm-hmm. and keep the theater going. Yeah. And it's a, a great opportunity for mostly local, aren't they? Yes, the every actors and actresses. Yeah, pretty much everybody's from this area. So yeah, that that's a great boon. Mm-hmm. Now, have you considered going to any of the places like in the theaters in Sarasota and working there and getting paid? Because most of those ones pay, right? Well, the Sarasota Players is volunteer also. And but the Sarasota um, Florida Theater, they pay, oh. don't they? Yes, they do. Yeah. I've, you know, I've done what I can doing various different and things. And still keeping and, up with school. Yes, that's important. And yeah. trying, because it's also important to be involved in school in addition to your community. Yeah. So I also did the local Glory Music High, which is the Sarasota Chorus, and that was a professional chorus. So that was that so was you've a had a few paid gigs. Also. Yes. <laughs> and that's the the long term right goal is to get into a Broadway or just tour companies or that's whatever. Ho- yes, hopefully something around that. I want to get classical training because I think that's really important, and then find my way back into musical theater. <laughs> when you say you want classical training, what does that entail? How is that um, different from what you've done so it's, far? It's you know opera training, so it's it's similar to musical theater, but it's more. Classical, you know, when you learn your the opera is the ba- yeah. You have to and learn, do you have to learn the Italian? For yes, you take those? a lot of you take a lot of diction. You know, you learn all the different. So, have you already started learning your Italian? Yes. <laughs> have you been a, to Italy? Various different. No, I wish no. <laughs> so that's that's really cool. So yes, you'll be all ready to go to Italy when it's time because you, if you can't do anything else, you can at least sing in Italian. <laughs> yes, you're right. I'll sing on the street in Italy. And, <laughs> and they'll just throw money. Yeah, <laughs> that's hopefully. Be, that's one way to go. <laughs> so what are your, when, when you're done with Carnegie, what are your aspirations for? You don't want to teach it. You want to be out there on the mm-hmm. stage. Do you see yourself in movies or on stage? Which... Definitely on stage. I hope to, like I said, I hope to go into the musical theater route whether it's touring or Broadway or where yeah and any like equity theaters hopefully and just work my way through there and I mean eventually I also want to travel you know see well there's a touring companies yes that's a great way to see the country Mm -hmm. is that's what I would love to do and you're friends with everybody Mm -hmm. on the cast or enemies (laughs) yes (laughs) there are some backstabbers there (laughs) I want that part. And eventually I do want to teach what I've learned, all my experiences to the next generation. When when it's time for you to be grandma, maybe? Yes. (laughs) I don't want to play. I want to be the star. I want to be Gloria. I'll I'll teach now. (laughs) That that might work. Mm -hmm. And um, what about, 
your your life? Do you see yourself getting hooked up with another actor or a, a, a singer rather than and having children? And what do you do when that happens? Are yes. You, well, that is that something you would put aside for your career? I don't know. It's always I. You know, we like me and my friends talk about it. Um, that is a huge. Know, it's, it, it's it's a huge decision when you're mm-hmm. that focused on a a goal. I don't know if I would. I think. I just want to focus on my career and not get distracted until maybe a little later yeah. when I have solid roots and I know that you I'm can, secure. And yes. you can stop and raise a child and yes. maybe your husband can go out and earn it for a few months while mm-hmm. you're pregnant and then mm-hmm. when take turns. Yes. Or even tour together, like the famous Angelina and Brad. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we'll go on a movie together. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think that the movies... They, they got into musicals for a while. Do you think they might ever have a comeback for that? Or is that just something that's more the upper upper brow stuff and people really aren't going to get into that? They did Buffy the musical. Yeah, they did. <laughs> Which I thought was really cool and helped bring it to people mm-hmm. and see that it's not all foreign languages and it doesn't have to be stuffy. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's... There should be a connection, but they have, like you said, it's getting very popular. The movies, making of musicals and things like that. And I, it's really cool. They just, um, American Psycho is on Broadway right now, which is so interesting. <laughs> um, but I do like original. I love the original shows that are written, you know, not based off of anything and things like that. Yeah, that's so hard in Hollywood. They just want to keep remaking everything instead yes. of doing something new. And even with your show tonight, I mean, this week, The Phantom is a remake of The Phantom of the Opera, but a little different because it's written by somebody else. It was actually, it was written before... Um, Phantom of the Opera. Really? Yes. So Phantom of the Opera is a copy of this show. You could, I mean, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> um, it's interesting. It was written before, but, you know, it lost the fame. All the investors pulled out when Angel Lloyd Webber came out with and said he was going to write his Phantom of the Opera. So. And he was more popular, so he got all the money. Yes. So yes. it killed it. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. This show is more true to the book, the novel, The Phantom of the Opera. It's very true to that, so... That's nice. Mm-hmm. And so, and and the new writer is he? You're saying is based on the book, but the new writer of this Phantom is he a new writer or is it the old it's, script? Um, Mari Yeston is the one who wrote the music for Phantom, and Arthur Kopic, um, who wrote the lyrics, and they have written lots of things. They wrote nine, um, and they did Titanic together, which were both popular really big musicals so your co-lead your your other lead actor that plays the phantom is he also very young he's he is young he's 21 i believe so so it's a very young cast yes that's yes. that's interesting do do you think in the book it was really kind of meant that to be that way or was the phantom older than the lady he loved i don't I'm not sure because the interesting thing about this show, which is why the Phantom's so young, is his father's in it, and there's a scene like between his dad and him, and it just shows, you know, it shows that relationship. So the Phantom can't be super old in this if his dad's in it. Yeah. So um, I think it 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 would be a little weird in this version if the Phantom was very old. <laughs> That's interesting. So what happened to the Phantom in this version that he's disfigured? They have that also interesting about this one is there's a ballet sequence and it tells the story of like um so his it's ballet father too? and his, there's ballet there's a, a ballet sequence in the in How the show. Yes, we have incredible dancers who are in the cast and there's like a lead lead dancer and she's wonderful and it's really it's really incredible. And how long does it last, the play? I believe it's around two hours, two hours and ten minutes. Is there minutes. an intermission? Yes. So people can get up and take a break. Yes. <laughs> two hours is a long time to yes. sit. It is a heavy, it's, you know, it's a dark show, so. Do you have good. a lot of, of scene changes? How many? We have quite a few. We do. There's a few big, like, dress, quick changes and things like that during it, so. It's Very a little nice. bit of chaos backstage. But... Very nice. <laughs> All right, now, are there any um, 
plans that you have to to go when you're up at Carnegie to work like in that area while yeah. you're in school? Yes, I hope to work summers up there. At Summer Carnegie Snow itself, or, or maybe in the yes, I, I mean in the in the stock. Pittsburgh area. Okay. Yes, that's what I mean. Because they have a pretty good. I mean, Pittsburgh isn't that far from many metropolitan areas, so yeah. you'll have a lot within an hour. The art influence in that area is almost as good as it is here. <laughs> <laughs> that's saying something. When people think of Pittsburgh, they think of steel mills, not of of. Art, <laughs> but you're right. There mm-hmm. is, and and just just. A, a stone's throw away. Mm-hmm. You have other major cities that are also bastions of. And then when you're in the summer, you could actually go up to New York. Yes, my sister's up there. Off so Broadway, I Broadway. Would like to stay yeah. with her. Yeah. That would be really cool. Mm-hmm. All right. It was very nice having you on Thank the you. show on Culture Coast. Now, do you have a website or anything? Facebook? Yes, that, uh, I have a Facebook. Now, not a personal Facebook. Do you have a career Facebook, an acting one? Not no, yet. I All don't. Right, so I'm not going to give out your Facebook <laughs> okay. page. Number. Thank you. <laughs> Just right. if you did have one, we would okay. let people know how to find you if they wanted to have you audition. But we, since you don't have that, we're not going to give out personal information. Okay. <laughs> but Thank you. if they want to see you, they should come during the next three weeks, starting yes. Thursday, to see, see the Phantom, Phantom here yes. at Manatee Players. Thank you for okay. being on Culture Coast. Thank you for having me. Nightmares, frightful visions during the night causing terror and loss of sleep. Daymares, frightful visions during the day causing fear and paranoia. Gothmares, gothic visions that can happen anytime causing horror and disgust, but sometimes they offer answers. Read Gothmares if you dare. <laughs> Gothmares, a young adult novel by Al Musitano, available on Amazon and fine bookstores everywhere. Village of the Arts, the largest artist colony in the state of Florida, located on 42 acres, includes artists, homes, galleries, gardens, and restaurants featuring handcrafted gifts, fine art sculptures, painting, photography, Enviro art, healing arts, books, mystics, and musical variety. A few of the galleries are unique in their offerings. Village Voices specializes in books and art created exclusively by Florida residents. The Dancing Crane Gallery offers fine art, custom jewelry, and unique innovative art. The Village Mystic offers all things metaphysical, meditation, massage, mediums, aromatherapy, psychic, shamans, reiki healing, and the gem mine where you can mine for your own personal treasure. Yoga Arts offers classes or one-on-one coaching. Musicians and bands can be found throughout the area. Many of the artists and musicians offer classes. Restaurants and bakeries provide respite for the weary and magic for the foodies. Visit during the first Friday Art Walk and stroll through the shops and galleries enjoying free appetizers, wine, music, and demonstrations. For hours and information, please visit the website at www.villageofthearts.com.